John Canzano, longtime Oregon columnist, and uh, you can find him at johnkenzano.com, has been following the story as well. All right, so what happened in the newsroom, or I should say courtroom, of, uh, you know, with the Pac-12 with Oregon State and Washington State? Well, it was really interesting to be in there because you have this small town feel in Colfax, less than 3,000 people there. You've got the judge's wife sitting over in the jury box. You got former Washington State coach Jim Walton sitting next to her, their family, friends. They had lunch together before the hearing. So there's all this uh, this really folksy stuff going on in the courtroom. And then you have these attorneys that are making $600 an hour who are, you know, it's like 15 attorneys that are in the room and they're in a tug of war over the board seats in the Pac-12 conference. And the judge, Judge Leiby, Gary Leiby, he ultimately ruled that the actions of the board in the last year, you know, they kicked UCLA and USC off the board when they announced they were going to the Big Ten. They kicked Colorado off when they said they were going to the Big 12. He said, hey, that action matters. Uh, that's how you acted. And he, you know, yesterday awarded the two board seats to Oregon State and Washington State. Now, there's going to be appeals. They're going to file a uh, uh, you know, a motion with the state Supreme Court today, the departing 10 schools will file that motion. They're going to ask for a stay of the judge's temporary restraining order, and they're going to try to find some more favorable terrain to uh, to argue this case. They'll probably go to the uh, to Olympia, the state capital there in Washington. Unbelievable. What do you think the Pac-12 is going to look like? Well, I think ultimately Oregon State and Washington State, they they want to rebuild this thing. You know, the, the president at Washington State was in the courtroom. Two athletic directors were in the courtroom. They want to get busy rebuilding it. And the 10 departing schools are really stalling this out. They know the transfer portal window is December 4th. They know that's kind of a drop dead moment. And so I think they're really trying to squeeze those two schools because they the departing schools want all the money. They want to take their share of the money. They want to dissolve the conference. Um, you know, there's $420 million in revenue coming in this year, this fiscal year. There's about another 170 coming in in future years. So there's a lot of money at stake here. Oregon State and Washington State want to use that money to rebuild. The departing schools want to take their share and, and be done with it. And so that's really what this is about. Okay, you need a new commissioner for the Pac-12 or whatever it's going to be called, and you need a TV deal. So yeah. the likelihood of all of that happening here before next season, I guess the commissioner would be the easy part. What about the TV deal? How attractive would that be? Yeah, I think they have to buy some time, you know, and I talked, there's two paths really for Oregon State and Washington State. I don't think they try to do this in, you know, 2024. I think okay. what they try to do is next season, they're going to play as a conference of two. That's, that's, I keep hearing that over and over. And the two paths that are available to them are, A, they put together a 12-game schedule. They try to uh, live off the media rights money and the what they win in this court case for the next couple of years. And then they really focus on 2025. The alternate path, if they're not able to put together a schedule, and I'm told that they already have modeled that, they have, you know, they they can successfully put together a 12 game schedule. But the more favorable one might just be to create a scheduling partnership or an alliance with the Mountain West Conference, place some of those schools in 2025. There's still a whole bunch of other schools out there like Utah, Cal, and Stanford who are looking for games. I think you could pick up some Power Five games, but I don't know. You're right about the TV money. I don't know what that deal could look like in 2024, but that's why the money that's wrapped up in the conference and in this court proceeding is so important because Oregon State and Washington State are going to have to live off of that for about 18 to 24 months. But then legally, if you restructure the Pac-12, but it's called the Pac-12, can you still get the automatic berth, the winner of the Pac-12, you know, playing for a national championship? Yeah, that's a really important question. And I think there's a debate to be had there and there may be in a negotiation. You know, Kirk Schultz, the president of Washington State, is on that council. He holds a vote in that in that decision on that president's council. So I think he could leverage that. I think really, though, too, the other thing I've heard is, you know, if you do cobble together the Pac-12 and you bring it back and you keep the brand, and I think they will do that. You could argue that if they add the right schools, Dan, that it becomes the best group of five. And that conference champion in most years probably gets a berth anyway, even though it's not automatic. Okay. So, you know, this is about, you know, I keep hearing this over and over from Washington State and Oregon State. It's about survival in the next two years. And then what happens to college football and can their brands and their success on the football field help them uh, be part of whatever comes next? We know that the. Uh... Colorado needs to have six wins, according to the Pac-12 guidelines, to be bowl eligible. Well, if the regular season ends 
and they have five wins, are they still affiliated with the Pac-12? Is the foot, like, can they, are they already seceding from the union? Now they're in limbo. Now they could go to a bowl game with only five wins, not the, the uh, requisite six. Yeah, I think the love language of college athletics is always going to be money. <laughs> I think if uh, if Colorado can justify that there is a windfall that the conference would share in, because technically nobody's leaving until August 1 of 2024. Uh, if they could convince the conference, hey, there's a windfall here. There's a network that's willing to pay. There's a bowl game that's willing to pay for Colorado to be part of it, which there should be. I think that the uh, the board, now made of two, uh, could get together and say, "Hey, we're we would lower that requirement, and a five team win, uh, you know, five win team could get into a bowl game." Great to talk to you, John. Uh, thanks for following this story. Thanks, Dan. That's John Canzano, longtime Oregon columnist, radio host. You can uh, follow him at johnkinzano.com.